Um, this has been an amazing trip. Uh, the energy, the enthusiasm, the response, um, the number of people who are leaving and signing up to pluck is already for us. Um, this is how we're going to win in Iowa. It's going to be grassroots, organizing, retail, and I've just been so encouraged by this trip so far. You're still well, look, I'm not that worried about Joe. I mean, just because people usually pull this far out don't usually end up winning, we shouldn't worry too much about uh, Vice President Biden. I think he'll be okay. Um, for those of us who are pulling in that advantageous positions, because if you look at past elections, I'm saying this all joking, and you're not even laughing. It's bad jokes. <laughs> look, I'm not looking at the polls right now, I'm looking at the people. And you've really got to focus on setting up an organization. We've got, I think, one of the best ones in the state of Iowa. We've got to focus on the retail. People who are pulling ahead this far out don't want them to come into the line. So uh, I'm really, really excited about where we are. I'm very, very energized by incredible crowds like this with overflow rooms up top, uh, people who leave and sign commitment to caucus cards. Things are really going well, and I'm just grateful to Iowa. Awesome. Senator, you were asked by a voter about Mueller's You mentioned that you do think voters care about Mueller's Why yeah. do you do that when a lot of what a lot of Look, I, I see this in a very sober terms. I know people really do care about it. Um, and for me, I, I take my constitutional responsibilities very seriously. So uh, I'm continuing to press for us to be able to interview and have open hearings with Mueller himself, an unredacted report, see the underlying information. And the President of the United States should stop uh, uh, stonewall us in Congress holding the executive branch accountable. That's what should be done no matter who's in office and who's not, Republican or Democrat. That's the way our system is designed. You told the crowd yesterday that um, voting uh, against Bet Betsy DeVos's nomination was one of your proudest moments. But I don't know if you saw the New Republic article uh, that called you a foot soldier for Betsy DeVos back in 2000. Can you talk about how how your opinion of her has evolved? Um, there's been no evolution in my opinion. Why are you ever. laughing? Because I'm laughing at you're pulling an article out from 19 years ago. Um, but I, I have not seen the article, man. And the reality is I fought hard against Betsy DeVos. I disagree with a lot of her policies since I've gotten to know her. And there's very few people in the Senate that know her as well as I know her. And uh, I, 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 I predicted exactly what she would be doing, pulling back protections for trans uh, children, pulling back protections from the Office of Civil Rights for African-American kids. Um, this is someone who is working against uh, public education, what's best for public school kids. I'm proud that I stood against her, uh, and I will continue to work to try to stop uh, a lot of the agenda that I think she has to stop the kids. But I mean, you did appear at an event with her, and you spoke about charter schools and school vouchers, albeit 19 years ago. So the question is, what's been the evolution? Well, it, I mean, you're from Newark, so you see uh, where my school views have actually helped a city turn around in dramatic fashion in the school system. You know the data. Our graduation rate is up over 30 percent. Our, our uh, scores for our kids, double-digit percentages in math and reading. We're now actually growing in population because people want to come into Newark for the quality of our schools. We're the number one school system in America. The number one, according to Washington University, would beat the odds school. So I'm proud of the work that I've done, uh, and I'm looking forward to continuing to be a president that fights for public education in every single city. You mentioned briefly the corporate influence on the agricultural industry yes, and sir. they're going to build to uh, you know, halt some of those ag mergers uh, while we can figure out the end of this. Uh, yes, sir. Um, you know, how do you, how do you halt uh, the, what's become, you know, the most commonplace, most profitable way to, you know, you know piece of the agricultural puzzle without um, you know, harming the whole. You know, how do you how do you encourage smaller firms if you're going to? Yeah. I think I think these mergers are not actually the most profitable. They may be the most profitable for the corporations, but they're hurting our ecology. They're hurting our heritage. They're hurting independent family farmers who are better stewards of the land. Than these massive uh, agro farms that are having CAFOs and poisoning the earth. I mean, I was in Western Illinois with a farmer who was a Republican farmer who talked about what that CAFO was doing in his community and poisoning his creek and it's well water. 
So that's actually passing on the costs of that kind of farming onto neighbors and onto a larger society. That's not capitalism. To me, that's they're socializing their costs and trying to privatize their profits. So we need to have a fair capitalist system that allows the original entrepreneurs in this country, independent family farms, to be able to compete and thrive as they have for generations. But right now they're getting squeezed. They're getting squeezed from their source products, their seeds, their chemicals. They're getting squeezed because they only have one person to sell often their goods to. Their share of the consumer dollars drop precipitously and, and net uh, uh, farm profits are down about 50% in six years. What about the system is working? It is broken and hurting family farmers. And to add insult to injury, we now have a president that is trying to offer them handouts because their tariffs that he's been putting on China are crippling folks. This is just not the way to do this. And, and so I'm gonna be a president that is going to fight for farmers by doing everything, by having an ag bill that supports independent family farmers, uh, by making sure that when we have uh, fights that we fight for fair trade for our farmers that they can just thrive and our workers uh, can have fair play playing field to compete on. And I'm going to make sure that we have policies that stop these corporate uh, uh, mergers that are violating our antitrust laws so that we protect our consumers, we protect our farmers, and we protect uh, 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 fair prices and more. All right. Thank you, everybody. You talk a lot about street fight, but you never say anything about Brick City, the Sundance. I just uh, figure it, one's 87 oh, minutes and the other one is two seasons that's a lot longer. I was in but the first season with you. You were. You were. <laughs> it, it, I, I, I will talk more about Brick City. I will talk more about Brick City. Because that speaks about you as mayor. It does. So it really does get a chance to see me as a leader. And I, and I think it's a great... It won a Peabody. Did your season win a Peabody? Because it's probably a second season if you're not in No, it was... <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.